just want to start this video saying if you're not going to respect what I'm going to tell you or if you are opposed or against cosmetic surgery or any other negative energy, then I'm going to ask you to click the X and get out of this video. I'm also going to request that you are part of a mature audience. There are going to be pictures in this and I'm going to go in some detail that you may not want to hear. <laughs> so I wanted to sit down and just chill out and relax and talk to you guys about the surgery that I recently had. And I also want to give you sort of like a backstory or a history on myself as well as I guess more information previously that led up to this surgery. I'm sure most of you guys already follow me on Snapchat and have been following since surgery so I decided for those of you who haven't seen it or maybe recently started following me and missed the story, I saved the entire story and I'm going to post that in a separate video. It is sort of like a vlog style. I started snapchatting before, then right after, and then the next few weeks that followed. So you can see how I did during recovery. I also added more to that story, things that I snapchat and then saved but didn't post because I knew I was going to later on fill that in. So even if you have seen the Snapchat story, there are some clips that you did not see yet. The link for that video will be right here. I'll also post it in the description box for you guys if you do want to check that out after this video. Some of the information I'm going to tell you guys, you may already know, so bear with me because I'm just going to have to fill in and maybe correct some of you because I love that some of you have gotten so personal with me and I'm able to open up with you guys, but some information that you guys are posting or telling other people isn't correct and some of you are just assuming and it's just that's how rumors start so i'm going to clear things up i'm going to tell you guys information that you may or may not already know and i'm just going to tell you all about what i've been going through so i guess the best way or easiest way to tell you what's going on is i will go back and then to current so let's rewind in 2009 i graduated high school i was getting ready to go to college I was 120 pounds, like an average built, but when I had hit puberty earlier, back when I was younger, high school, whenever you hit it, I went from literally flat chest nothing, a chest, a cup, to an E cup, literally, in a year. I went from nothing to humongous, and I don't really know why, I don't really know where it came from, boobs don't really run in my family, I don't know, I was just one of the unlucky ones, I guess. God just, I guess, decided that B is for boobies. And I hated them. I was so self-conscious. They were not cute at all. Boobs that grow that fast, naturally, like, they don't look good. <laughs> In my opinion. And by no means am I saying what I choose to look like or choose to do to myself is something that you should do. And I just want to make that clear. I'm not trying to advocate surgery or anything like that. I'm just saying do what makes you happy and for me this is what made me happy. They were extremely saggy, there was no volume, they were just huge for my body. I was small, I was a child, I was in high school. So when everyone went to senior week, I had breast reduction and the outcome was a 34 C cup. And I was so happy. They fit my body perfectly, they exceeded my expectations. And I was extremely confident, I was comfortable in my own skin. When I was an e-cup, a natural e-cup, I was wearing so many layers. I would wear a regular bra, a sports bra, a tank top, maybe another tank top that was cut higher, and then my top. Like, I was layering on layering, trying to push them down and keep them in and cover myself up because I was embarrassed and self-conscious. People made fun of me. They gave me nicknames that were not nice. Even my senior yearbook, I no longer have that because people destroyed it, making fun of the way I looked in it. They drew pictures of boobs because that's, I guess, how some of the people there knew me. People suck. <laughs> so yeah, I don't even have my senior yearbook anymore because of that. Pitts McGee, whatever the fuck you guys called me. <laughs> so I had the surgery. Everything was fantastic. I no longer felt the need to cover up. I just felt beautiful. I felt great. Then fast forward a little bit later on in college. I believe it was junior year of college, I gained about 30 pounds. I went from 120 to like 150, like in a year, year and a half. And I just want to let you guys know, freshman 15 slash junior 30 slash whatever are a real thing. Take care of yourself. 
Don't you little things out there think that you can go into college or whatever because you're young and drink and eat shit food and not gain weight because it's going to catch up to you. Trust me. You have to take care of your body. I have a whole video on my weight loss story. I'll put that link here as well if you guys haven't seen it or want to watch it. That's one of my most important videos that I've ever published or post for you guys. That video really hits home and I really open up to you guys in that video. I laughed, I cried, there were so many feels happening. This is another one of those videos, although I hope I don't cry. <laughs> but back to this video, I then fast forward, came back home after graduation and decided I needed to do something, I needed to make a change. So I lost 40 pounds and while doing that, I was able to lose fat, gain muscle, tone, but I couldn't really change as much as I wanted to with my chest size. So let's just make sure you guys are following. I went from high school to an E. I had breast reduction and went to a C. I went into college, gained all the weight, stretched out those boobies, and went to a 34 triple D slash double D, it depends where I went. Then lost all the weight, and then went to a 32 double D. Got the whole alphabet going on here. And that was my natural body, post-surgery, post-weight gain, post-weight loss. So there were a lot of changes going on in my body. Are you guys confused yet? <laughs> to give you guys a better idea of what that looked like on my body. So I'm 5'3". So I lost the weight, I was extremely happy with my body, but I was still semi self-conscious about my chest because when I lost the weight, I lost the volume. And I also stretched the skin, I had stretch marks all over the top, I lost the elasticity in my skin. So there's different levels of like sagging. And mine was very minimal, but it did really affect me and I couldn't do anything about it myself as far as changing what I was eating or different workouts. It was just a loss of the tight skin and elasticity and volume pretty quickly in my cup size. So 32 double D, but they were no longer as high or as round or as full as I had wanted them. I would tape them pretty much daily. I didn't like wearing bras because bras are uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't really like wearing bras to be honest. I'd rather be braless. But I also love wearing things that are plunge or backless, things that are more showy. I would tape them like all the time. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. It was exhausting. <laughs> so I maintained the weight loss now for about two years and I had to save up financially. I also had to make sure I could get time off of work. I, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. And I decided I wanted to make a change and I wanted to get a breast lift with an augmentation. So that is what I had done three weeks ago. I had a breast lift with a small implant because I needed help from the doctor to remove or fill out the excess skin, excess tissue, and to fill out the top because there was just no volume left. And I wanted 25 year old boobs. Think what you want, but that's what I wanted and that's what has made me happy. It was hard for me because I had already went through the surgery before and I was super happy with the outcome and then I basically ruined it. When I gained all the weight and then lost all the weight, I had just stretched out the tissue and the skin so much and then when I did the weight loss, it just, I lost fat or whatever, but there was just excess. And it just needed to go. <laughs> Bye. So I had my consultation. During consultation, we talked about what I wanted. And that was to fill out and round out the top. So I wanted to fill out the extra skin and tissue that I had because my breasts were a teardrop shape. And I wanted rounder and fuller. So we decided to achieve that we were going to have to remove and tighten 
or lift the bottom section and then add a small implant at the top to round out. So I ended up getting 175 cc's, which is very small for an implant. I was just really excited and just wanted to get this off of my chest, literally and figuratively. I wanted youthful looking breasts and I wanted a torso. They were basically just saggier than I wanted and I couldn't take it anymore. I was not and I am not striving for perfection. The way that I look and feel is not going to be the way everyone else looks and feels. What I think is ideal and beautiful may not be something that you guys like at all. And that's awesome. That's unique. That makes us different. And that's great. One of my favorite things about my consultation and about my surgeon, he was the same surgeon I went to when I had breast reduction. I love him. I think he's great and I love his work. So in the consultation, he started off asking what it is I was there for and why. And originally I had told him I was there for a breast lift. So we discussed my options and what it was that I felt I wanted and needed and what would make me happy. So after showing him pictures and discussing, he said things, for example, you feel this way and you want this. It was never, I feel this way, I think you should do blah, 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 blah. He made it about me, which that's what this whole thing is about. It's about me. And that made me feel great. It made me feel he was listening to what I was saying. I don't know, it just really put me at ease and made me understand that something that he may see is not something that I see and vice versa. And what I was saying was important and relevant to what he was going to do. Of course, he's a professional, he's a doctor, he knows what he's doing. So any suggestions that he would have obviously are for the better and you should consider that. I just feel the way that he worded things made me feel very comfortable. The augmentation part actually came in to play when we were doing the consultation and he was looking and measuring and I hope I'm describing this for you guys to understand. Post weight loss, post baby type boobs. <laughs> like that's the best way I can describe it. Which I, again, don't have children, but it's just like that's the way that they looked. Was the lack of volume or the loss of volume and the saggier stretched out skin. So that's when he explained to me that I can get the lift, that's what I came in for, but I'm not going to get the fullness or rounder top without something in place of that. So that's when we decided or started to discuss on getting the smallest or smaller implant possible to fill out that area. Which at the time, I didn't really know how to fill or fix that skin, but that made sense and it worked. When I had breast reduction, I won't lie, it was painful. It was a hard, long recovery. I was extremely nauseous, I was throwing up for days. I got an infection, like, that was hard. It was worth it, don't get me wrong. I was thrilled with the results after, but it was really tough. It was a lot of work. For him, I'm sure, because <laughs> they were huge. But it was also a lot of work mentally and physically for me. It was draining. It was hard. And I had surgery previously, even before the reduction, for other reasons, and nothing compared to that. That was hard. It was tough. This was a breeze. Let me just tell you, fam. I didn't get sick once. No nausea. I was drinking a PSL the next day. I was... I did great. Which, if you guys watch a Snapchat, you already know, or you will know, how I did during recovery, but... It was, compared to that, it was a breeze. It was really good. I'm post-surgery about three weeks now, so I do have some bruising still. My scars are obviously fresh. They're like red, bright pink still. So I still have a long way to go. I'm sure the implants are still settling. There's still a long way to go. I'm still sore if I move a certain way. I still can't lift things. I believe I can start doing that after about six weeks. So when I go to the gym, I mainly focus on legs or I do like the bike. I'm not running because you can't have the bouncing going on yet. So I still got some time to do that. I'm like SpongeBob at the gym. There are a few important things that I hope you take from this video. And one major thing is you should never feel guilty for the way that you feel. I made this video in hopes that anyone out there that feels the way that I feel or felt will be helpful to you and that you'll feel a sense of relief knowing that you're not alone. And it's okay to feel the way that you feel, but it's also okay to make a change and to do something about it to feel better. I feel like there's just like the stigma about cosmetic surgery or plastic surgery or whatever you choose to call it. And I don't know why. I'm again, not saying, hey, Go out and get a boob job. Go out and get this done. Go out and get that done. I'm just saying, if there's something that means 
that much to you where you're willing to go under the knife and alter your body it obviously is important to you and the way that becky feels about your decision of what you do with your body doesn't matter there's always going to be people who disagree with you people who don't understand you people who have not gone through what you've gone through and won't and that's okay people get uncomfortable with situations that they don't understand or have not gone through if they feel they need to talk negative about what you choose to do to make yourself happier obviously something's wrong with them and they have more issues than you do <laughs> at least you're open and honest and doing something to make a change that's better for yourself so shout out to becky you do not need to explain yourself i don't need to explain myself i don't have to tell you why i chose to do what i do but i want to share my message with you and with all the pressure out there in the industry People tell you to do or look or act a certain way, but when you do something about it to try and get there, they tell you that it's wrong. That's a bunch of bullshit. There were some people who were like surprised that I was telling all of you guys this and sharing my experience with you. Like I should keep it a secret. Why? I don't have a reason to lie about it or to keep it a secret. I'm happy and for a while I felt like alone about it because people don't really talk about it. Which I never really understood. I've always been a very open person, but I felt very alone because anytime I did bring it up, it was sort of like a hush-hush situation. Like people didn't feel comfortable or didn't want to talk about it, didn't know what to say. And that's fine. That's okay. But I don't feel ashamed and I shouldn't feel ashamed for making a change to my body or wanting to make a change for the better. Before getting this surgery, it was really hard actually to find information about a lift with an implant. I could find some information about breast lift. I could find a ton of information on breast augmentation. But as far as getting like a lift with an implant, there really wasn't much out there, or at least that I could find. And there wasn't much that I found that catered to me personally because I'm only 25. I have no children. Most of the information I found were post-children and it was harder for me to relate because I couldn't find much information that was relatable to me as far as size or age. I did find a few examples but again there wasn't much and I feel like most of the information I found was just like photos. Like people don't talk about stuff like this. And the few that do or did, people left negative posts or negative things which I know it's gonna happen here. It always does. Even though I warned you guys, don't watch it if you don't want to hear about it, don't watch it if you don't like it, blah, 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 you still do. And then you just take a giant dump all over it. I respect people that are open and honest. And to me, that's relatable. If someone's going to sit here and tell you, I felt like shit about myself and I got up and did something about it. I'm not saying you have to scream from the rooftops that you're getting a nose job or breast reduction or whatever you're getting done. But I'm just saying, like, you also shouldn't feel the need to lie or hide it. Am I making any sense or am I just rambling? I deserve and you deserve to be able to look in the mirror and to be proud of what you see. You should feel sexy, you should feel confident and comfortable. And in this example, feminine. I wanted to feel sexy, I wanted to wear certain clothing, I wanted to be able to go braless and not feel self-conscious. I wanted to look the way I felt, I guess, in clothing, like with a bra on or taped. I wanted to look that way when I'm also naked. And that's basically like what I said in the consultation to the doctor or showed him examples. I showed him pictures of other breasts that I liked. And then I also showed him pictures of my breast taped and in a bra and naked and then showed him what I did or did not like or what I wanted to change. And basically that was that. I wanted to look this way but without whatever it is around them. So without the bra, without the tape. Make sense? I also want to stress that you can't just go to a doctor and say, hey, get rid of whatever. If you need to lose weight or whatever, you can't just go to the doctor and say, get rid of it. Like, you have to also make sure you're doing everything else as far as routine and lifestyle to back up what you're going to have done. And to make sure that you are in your fittest or the best that you can be before he or she does any work to your body. Because if you do make any changes, such as weight gain, weight loss, having babies, breastfeeding, all of those examples, that's also going to affect the work that the doctor did. Mentally and physically, I choose to try and live the healthier lifestyle. And there's certain things that I do or that you can do to 
look and feel the best that you can, such as eating healthier foods or going to the gym. But I also accepted the fact I can't eat a certain way or work out a certain way to reverse skin losing its elasticity, like due to the weight loss or due to gravity. I can't fight those things. I can't make healthy changes to <laughs> get fuller, younger, tighter looking breasts. I just can't. They're, I physically cannot do that to myself. At the end of the day, I choose to share my story with you guys and not sugarcoat anything because this is real. I'm real. This is my reality. You guys are a part of my life and there's other people out there who may feel or want the same thing. And I don't want you to have to search the internet for hours trying to find answers or something to relate to. I just want you guys to know that this is what I had done, this is why, and it's okay. It was like the one thing that I needed to do to finish or complete <laughs> the work that I had done so far, as far as losing weight and being healthier, and have them stay up here. <laughs> I'm at the age where I'm putting myself first. I'm prioritizing how I feel and what it is that I do, and sure, some of you may think that's selfish, but I don't have children. I graduated college, I have a degree, I'm working two jobs, and this is just what I choose to do for myself at this time. This is something that made me feel confident and sexy and comfortable, and I'm not going to apologize for feeling that way. None of this was given to me or handed to me. I'm doing payments. I put down as much as I could up front. And it's not cheap by any means. I'm not even going to tell you what mine costs. Just know that it's different by state, by country, by doctor, by procedure. As far as cost, you're better off just having a consultation if it's something that you're really interested in doing. So yeah, the long anticipation and curiosity and assumptions and everything are now out in the open. I just love chilling with you guys. Like, you know, like PJs, sweats, whatever, just hair up in a mess, coffee. Want some? Be sure to watch that Snapchat style vlog that I did. I also do post other information in there. I'm pretty sure I'll end up doing a third video in this playlist or series about even more random things that I think of later today or in the future. That might be helpful. So yeah, just comment any questions that you have and I'll post those in an upcoming video. But be sure to give this video a thumbs up for any of you guys who found this helpful, that enjoyed this video, that just want to give me a thumbs up. <laughs> and I want to thank you guys so much for obviously watching this video, but for taking the time to leave me comments and writing emails or Snapchats or whatever you had sent me in the last couple weeks, hoping that surgery went well, hoping that I was recovering and everything was good. I really appreciate it. and. It really helped me uh, while recovering and kept me at ease, really. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, seriously. And I also just want to generically say thank you for those of you who do respect mine or others' decision to do something like this because it is really like a life-changing experience and it is important. And even though you may not understand it fully or not go through it, just respecting and listening or supporting someone that is, is so helpful and so important and really just makes a huge difference on the situation. So thank you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.